Welcome back to the show, everybody. I think I've got a bit of a challenge for us, if you all feel up to it. Um, I think I am. Plus, it could make for a couple of interesting episodes for the channel here. Show you what it is. So, a buddy of mine contacts me and says, I've got this Farmall M carburetor, and it looks like it spent some time sitting with a considerable amount of water inside of it. So we've got a lot of rust going on down in the bowl. The float clearly has some freeze damage to it. So yeah, the water surrounded it, then it froze. So it crunched the actual floats in and then water got inside of them, froze again, heaved them out. So that's no good at all. That's plenty crusty down in there. We've also got the low idle jet broken off. So we'll have to do something with that. The um, upper portion or throttle body as it's called, doesn't look nearly as bad. We got some rust going on on that uh, that float pivot bracket, and that old uh, pot metal venturi is pretty well seized in there. And we're going to have to try and get that out at least to clean the passages that are behind it. Don't know what we can save, but I think we can make this work again. What do you all think? You up for it? I think we can do it. Plus, I haven't done a Farmall M carburetor on the channel yet, so I decided why not. So first thing we need to do is get that completely disassembled and see if we can get the rusty parts and the broken parts out of it and see what all we can save. So let's get started. So I'll just start with the throttle body. Um, let's strip all the easy parts off first. That Venturi I think is going to be a bit of a challenge. We'll see. So I guess it doesn't really matter if we start down here or not. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this float pivot bracket out of the way. We're off to a fine start. <laughs> Two screws <laughs> and that just comes right, right off. So next I'll remove the inlet seat. There we go. Turn this out, luckily the old gasket came with it. Another easy target looks like this throttle stop screw it has a spring captured under it. That's to apply friction under the head of it to keep it from moving on its own. Sure enough, this is turning right out. These usually don't put up too much of a fight. They're long winded though, plenty of threads on them. All right, there's that. And then just behind that is this um, this drilling passage plug. I like to always take those out too because you can clean in there behind them a lot better. These usually aren't very long. Yep, they've got that straight shouldered end on them like that. Next up, throttle plate and shaft. I want to point something out to you all, particular to the Farmall M carburetors. Right off the end of this screwdriver, look in that area, there's a number 12 you can see stamped in the plate. When you put the throttle plate in, you want that 12 to be facing up. That's just a little landmark identifier, if you will. So we've got two slotted head screws go through that throttle shaft, hold that throttle plate in place. Take both those out. There's one. And two. We'll open that throttle plate slightly, grab onto it with some pliers, pull it right out. And now the throttle shaft can slide right out. Just like that. Now the next challenge is going to be this idle adjusting screw. And I've been working at this for a bit. It is tight, corroded right in. I actually rounded out the screwdriver slot once and I've had to take a file and very carefully renew it and cut it a little deeper. Not to worry, we've got a new one of these in the kit. I just want to get this one out without breaking it. So if this doesn't work, we will also introduce some heat, but I've had it moving just a little bit. Gives a snap like that. 
and a little bit of a turn. So as long as we've got it moving, just going to keep working it. I've also uh, thrown some of my favorite uh, magic uh, loose juice down there toward the bottom of it as well, just trying to give it all the help that I can. It stopped cracking. I'm hoping that doesn't mean that it's twisting. Seems like it's plenty solid. <clears throat> Do we have it on the run? think so. There we are. We got it. Back to the bench now. We are going to need to remove the throttle shaft bushings because they're worn and there's some play. Plus on these Farmall M carburetors, you can't see it right now, but this, this outer bushing here has two holes in it that have to be positioned just so to correspond with this notch, the slot that's in the throttle shaft. And IH calls that the economizer slot. We will explain that fully when we do the reassembly, but right now we're just seeing if we can get all this apart. So we need to get this plug driven out the back that seals off the passage back there. And it's trying to run away. I got it. Just a little Welsh plug. Okay, there's the two holes I was telling you about. So just need to keep track of those when we put it back together. Now, all we've got left is the Venturi and in a perfect world that wouldn't be corroded and we could have just pulled that out by hand. But we're gonna save that for now. We'll come back and fight that later because I, I think it's, it's really gonna be a battle. I wanna see what this float bowl acts like. Try to get some pieces out of it. Hopefully this broken off jet is all that we're going to have to deal with down here. So we might as well start with the choke plate. We've got a single screw right in the center and we'll have a spring loaded detent under the lever that we'll have to look at. I can see, I don't think the spring is, um, is doing a whole lot. Like we don't have any kind of a sprung event that's going to happen when we take it apart we'll just see okay there's the screw there's the detent ball fell out and yeah it's got a pretty good flat worn on it i think it's been in there for a while pull the shaft out of the butterfly There we go. Yeah, we've got some wear on there. Butterfly out. Let's see if we can get that spring out of there. There we go. There's that tiny little spring. Comes out of that pocket. I want to take a look at this. Is that a BB? No, it's, it's a steel ball, but Look at the shiny flat spot that's been worn in the side of that. That has worn against this choke lever many, many cycles. So 
good to be renewing all of this. Next we'll take out the metering nozzle. It's got this hex portion at the base. We can grab onto it with a socket and it goes all the way through the carburetor and threads into this screwdriver slot plug at the back. Let's see if we can get lucky and we don't need to put a screwdriver back here. I'm just holding it with my fingers. Usually these, yeah, these come out pretty well. They don't fight you a whole lot. Oh yeah, look at this. Very dirty and rusty in there. Good thing we're taking this completely apart. So that plug never moved at the back. Maybe it's rather stuck in as well. It should be falling out right now. Oh. Okay, that's tight. So before I fight this one, I'm going to get the bowl drain out of the way. Open things up just a bit. So this is the actual drain pet cock. And the seat for it is just a pipe thread fit into the base of the bowl. So we'll turn that out just like that. And at the back here, we've got the main jet. We'll take the needle out now. There we are. And this is a packing nut. Okay, so we've got some packing material back there. Seals against this, um, this smooth portion of the jet. So let's see about taking that out. This should have a taper on the inside. Yep, you can see some of the old packing on there. So next we'll look at the condition of the packing and decide if we want to peel that out of there or not. And it turns out this packing is a do not save. It's just crumbling apart. It's completely dried out, run out, shot. There's no compressibility left in it. If I left that in there, it would just leak gas all the time. I always like to leave the original packing in if it's still good. This stuff, not so much. And as long as we're digging things out, let's remove the um, overflow drain media from beneath this Welsh plug. So we just want to tap it in. There we are. There we go. And, oh, I was going to say, beneath that should be some felt that acts as kind of as a filter, but there was nothing in there. So it's another good thing that we took out because the hole that's in the center of that has just been pulling unfiltered air in this whole time. So usually there's always a dried up, crusty piece of felt in there, but uh, it's all right, we've got a new one in the kit, so. See about this one now. Remember, this is not threaded. There we go. So this means we're down to just that broken off low speed jet in the bowl assembly. So I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. I've got the new one here from the kit. We'll grab it with these pliers because it's so small my fingers cover half of it up. It just sticks straight up out of the bowl like that and the threaded portion at the bottom goes in until you uh, run out of threads and then it cinches in and it's got a very tiny little hole through the center of it. And that's all it is. So we'll see if we can extract that broken off threaded end first. And if not, I think we'll have to drill and re-tap. Hopefully we'll get lucky and it comes out. All right, so I don't have extractors that are that small, but I've got very small 
Torx drivers. And sometimes in a pinch, a Torx bit can be used like an extractor. You just have to be careful, especially with Torx that are this small. The uh, straight um, ribs, or ridges I should say, shanks on the tool end of the driver will pound down into malleable material like this brass. And they'll offer you a bite without expanding it out and tightening it in the bore even further. And we're going to try a little bit of heat on this as well. Telling you already, if this doesn't work, we're gonna to have to drill and retap. And I'm certainly not going to twist hard enough to snap that Torx bit off in there. That would really be bad. <laughs> no, I don't think anything's gonna happen with that. It's pretty tight. I know you all can't see this on the GoPro, but fortunately I was able to drill down the center of the old jet just perfectly enough that I've been able to start curling some of the old brass threads right out. And that's gonna make it easier to start the tap to go and do the final cleaning. So I can throw this picture up for you all. A still I took with my phone because we can blow it up and zoom in and you can see what I'm talking about, just pulling that little curly cue right out. So I'm just going to keep sitting here working this little by little. We're just peeling the spiral out more all the time. Have to be patient. It's a super small thread too. Okay. I think we were able to save it. We'll do a test fit. New jet. No reason why that shouldn't work. It's a good fit still too. So there's a victory. So now that we have the float bowl completely disassembled and all things addressed, that just leaves this stuck Venturi. I would really love to leave it in, but it's got so many passages that go around like channels that are cut in the outside of it. If we don't take that out, we can't get this clean. So I really don't want to break this upper throttle body piece. I'd certainly sacrifice the Venturi first, but um, I have an idea a special pusher tool for this might help us out a little bit. There, it's moving. That went a, 
that started moving a lot easier than I was than I was expecting. Okay, I didn't have a lot of travel built into those tools, so I think that's about as far as we go right now. But it was just more to break it loose and get it to start to move than anything. So, all right, backstop support. Yeah, it's crusty through there, but we pushed it out, so we can tap it the rest of the way. There it is. So that's good news, everybody. We didn't break anything today. <laughs> the Venturi, yeah, it came through just fine. Uh, we're just gonna give it a good cleanup. Should be ready to go again. Uh, lots to clean up in the throttle body. Even more to clean up in the float bowl. That's gonna take a lot of sandblasting in there, but I don't see any reason why we can't salvage most of what's here. Uh, the float, I'm writing off. It doesn't even pay to try to uh, repair these. I've got another parts carburetor around here. It should have a good float in it. We're gonna go check that out, as well as uh, uh, a less uh, rusted and pitted um, float bracket. So aside from that, we've got the master rebuild kit, all new jets, needles, shafts, bushings, seals, gaskets. So not bad progress for today. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, next episode, we're going to throw some of those pieces into the blasting cabinet and uh, see if we can't get passages all cleaned out and renew gasket surfaces, flatten everything, make sure all is good. And then hopefully we turn the corner and begin the reassembly. So hope to see you all back for that. Thanks again, everybody.